What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're continuing on my Shrek series of reviews. If you're just now hopping on, I did a review recently for the original Shrek as well as its spin-off that came a decade later Puss in Boots and I really wanted to kind of start covering these movies again here on the channel because I hadn't had a chance to do them here on my channel I had done them over on my buddy Jacob Martin's channel and most notably I still haven't seen the latest Puss in Boots film The Last Wish which ended up getting nominated for an Oscar this previous year at the start of this year and was just a huge film that everybody was talking about from the tail end of last year that I honestly still haven't gotten around to seeing so I figured since I'm already late to the party why not just cover the whole series leading up to the last wish and so without further ado today we're going to be talking about not only one of the feature films in this franchise but also two of the shorts in this franchise as i mentioned in the last video i now have my hands on the full blu-ray collection of the entire series that not only came with all of the feature length films that are a part of this franchise but also the shorts and shrek the musical and my buddy mike of did you see that actually messaged me after watching that first video and gave me the idea to start covering the shorts alongside some of the features. So today we're going to be talking about two of those shorts alongside the movie we're talking about today and that movie is Shrek 2. Directed by Andrew Adamson, Kelly Asbury, Conrad Vernon, and starring, again, a star-studded cast of people like Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, Cameron Diaz, and many, many others, Shrek 2 is the sequel to the absolute phenomenon, Shrek. So I won't waste any time of this video regurgitating my thoughts on the original Shrek movie, but if I can say anything to start this off, I love that film. And again, I talked about it in that video, and you can go back and check it out, how I went to go see that movie when it was just a, you know, new animated film that was coming out at the time, and I got to watch it rise into this absolute worldwide phenomenon that would get multiple spin-offs, multiple sequels, video games, clothing lines, theme park expansions, whatever the case may be, there was everything and anything. There was even a Shrek ketchup at some point that was multiple colors. It was just a phenomenon. And so I look back on those days fondly because I got to be a part of all that. I got to be a part of seeing that grow. And so when Shrek 2 came out, it was already a huge deal. And the hype leading up to this movie was definitely big. And I remember going to see this movie on opening day and it was a completely slammed theater from beginning to end. There was not a single seat in the house empty. And I remember even sitting somewhere near the front of the theater because of how busy the movie theater was that night for Shrek 2 and so going back and revisiting this film for probably the first time in a good chunk of years since I covered them on my buddy Jacob Martin's channel I had so much fun going back and revisiting this film this film similar to a lot of sequels definitely does a very similar story to the original film while flipping certain things on its head the movie opens up and we're with Shrek and Fiona who are now married and they're spending their time together and they end up getting an invite to go to a kingdom called Far Far Away which is where Fiona is from. And of course she's naturally excited. She's been invited by her parents to bring her new husband to the kingdom that she grew up in and is just, you know, looking forward to being able to kind of embrace family and kind of bring her new family into her family. And when they arrive, of course, things don't necessarily go as planned because they're both ogres and so there's a lot of awkwardness there's a lot of great humor around that and of course if you've seen the first film and you know anything about the character of Shrek he was very apprehensive to the idea and is not really a fan of going warning Fiona that if they go that trouble is gonna ensue which does end up happening not too long into the film you realize immediately that the king and queen in this movie played beautifully by Julie Andrews and John Cleese they do not really enjoy the idea of Shrek, and more so the king. The queen is being far more of a supporting mother who is just accepting her daughter, just excited and happy to have her daughter back, whether she's an ogre or not. However, we end up learning that the king had a side plot going on with the fairy godmother as well as her son, Prince Charming, to actually try and be the ones who saved Fiona first so that he would kiss her and now they'd be able to kind of have like this unity between fairy godmother's family and, and her whole, you know, magical world and uh, the king of far, far away. And so now with that going on, you end up having them working together to try to get Shrek out of the picture to see if they can maybe 
reverse this curse on Fiona and try to see if they can, you know, get Prince Charming to be with Fiona. Prince Charming in this film is played by Rupert Everett, who does a fantastic job of playing this very cocky, dumbass kind of character who doesn't know his foot from his ass. He's just kind of there to look and act pretty. That's what he thinks he is. That's pretty much all he brings to the table. And he's just a, a dope the entire time. But I do think that Rupert Everett brings a lot to the character that is comical and fun, but also has that charm in the voice. And just overall, the voice cast does a great job of bringing these characters to life. And you can't talk about this film and the voice acting without talking about Jennifer Saunders as the fairy godmother, who I think is fantastic in this film and has a beautiful musical number near the end of the film. The classic holding out for a hero, which I think is a fantastic entire segment of this movie. And so, yeah, you have Shrek trying to now be what his the king and queen want him to be, or at least what he thinks. So he ends up going on this adventure with Donkey and a new friend that they make in this movie known as Puss in Boots, played by Antonio Banderas for the first time in this film. And they end up working together to try to find a potion that's going to turn Shrek into a human and make him look handsome and exactly what Fiona wants, or at least he thinks that's the case. And amidst all this, things end up getting mixed up where Fiona thinks that Prince Charming is Shrek having taken the, the potion. And, and there's just a whole lot of mumbo jumbo going on with the general gist of the end of the film kind of being similar to the first film where you have a, a, a time deadline and a kiss that needs to happen near the end of the film in order for Fiona to either stay how she looks or turn back into an ogre. And so that's the basic gist of the film, but it's also more fun because Shrek gets to become a human in this film. You even have Donkey turning into a beautiful stallion in this film as well. Well, and along the way, we get to be reintroduced to tons of the magical creatures and characters from the first film that get way more spotlight here in the film, like Pinocchio and the Gingerbread Man and so many others, the Three Blind Mice. There's just so many great moments with all of these just miscellaneous characters in the film overall. And I'm happy to say that while revisiting the film, I realized that I think the first Shrek is definitely still superior compared to the second one. This does a really great job of taking that base premise of the first film, flipping it on its head, kind of putting Shrek and Fiona in on, on opposite sides of things, but also really allowing the emotion to be there because there are so many moments in this film that while the premise is goofy, while there are elements about it that are absolutely ridiculous, there's heart, there's charm in this film, and the voice cast is really one of the main reasons that it works. But beyond that, you have fantastic, beautiful animation that may be a little dated by today's standards, but still has a charm and a look to it that is still really authentic, and it just honestly still enjoyable to watch. I watched this on my 4K TV, and honestly, it looked just as good as most animated films coming out today, outside of a couple of moments here or there. I would say that this animation in the second film definitely has a higher budget look than the first film did, which makes sense since the first film was a phenomenon, and they were able to put more money into the sequel but yeah while the story i think in the first one is a little bit more simplistic and maybe a little bit stronger overall i think that this film does a really good job like i said of taking that original story flipping it on its head in a lot of ways adding some new characters and some big over-the-top sequences to just make it a good fun old time and one of the things I just had to reference in this review for sure, along with all the various references that this film has to other pop culture, whether it be movies or music artists or things that have happened in real life, there's even some really interesting things they included in here, like the scene where there's literally police brutality. They kind of have like a cops show in Shrek that's similar to cops that we have here in the, the real world. And in this, we see that the police are being pretty brutal towards Shrek and Donkey and uh, end up even finding some catnip on Puss in Boots that definitely has a, a bit of a I just found some drugs on you kind of vibe. Oh. Catnip. That's uh, no mind. And I, I just really enjoy that this film and this franchise just goes for it, you know, in a world where we have tons and tons and tons of family films that, you know, play it safe or definitely avoid trying to say or do certain things that might offend certain people or may upset parents. I love that the Shrek films were always something, especially the first two, that just didn't hold back. They went for it. They had fun with it. They were trying to be something that could, you know, make the adults laugh, but also not be too inappropriate. And there are so many moments in and small lines of dialogue that are definitely teetering on being too inappropriate. But I love that back then it just never was viewed that way. The same way a small line in a movie today can kind of piss off a whole fucking load of parents and create this huge like kind of 
discourse online over nonsense. And so to watch a movie like this that just has humor, that just goes for it, that allows, you know, kids to be smart and, and clever around some of the humor, but also have jokes in there that will go over kids' heads and be there for the adults so that adults and kids can enjoy this film on different levels. I think that's an amazing thing. I think it's something that allows a film like this to stand the test of time. And when I think of the first Shrek and the second Shrek, I just think two really strong peak animated films of the 2000s without a doubt. And revisiting the second film, I had a lot of fun with it. My biggest gripes with the film would be that there are some moments that it just feels like we're kind of just regurgitating certain things. While I do enjoy the clever kind of flipping on its head of certain elements, there are some parts where I feel like maybe a little bit more originality in certain points would have worked. But that's a pretty minor gripe in a film that I ultimately find to be very entertaining. Is every joke an absolute hit? Maybe not. Is every single moment of animation absolutely perfect? No. Are there some elements that do feel rushed? Yeah, sure. But I think when it comes to a movie like this, it just flat out is entertaining. It's fun to watch. I was never bored while revisiting the film. And maybe there's some nostalgia there that's definitely bringing that to the forefront. But in terms of going back and revisiting a film from my childhood, every here and there, there are movies that just, you know, they have way more negatives than maybe Maybe I remembered, but in the case of Shrek and Shrek 2 so far, top notch, absolutely loved going back and revisiting this film, and I think forever it'll be one of my favorite films that also has some of the best needle drops throughout the entirety of any animated films that I've ever seen. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and leap on over now to the first of the shorts that I want to talk about, which is actually a short that was connected to the first Shrek film, and that is Shrek and the Swamp Karaoke Dance Party, and there's really not an abundance to say here. The directors of this are some of the people that were involved in the first film, and it's literally just a few minutes short of all the characters we saw in the first Shrek movie just dancing to a bunch of music singing along to the songs it's a karaoke little song thing for like I think it's like four minutes four or five minutes there's not much to say about it but I wanted to cover it here as I cover all of them this was a you know just kind of there it was cute to watch it actually kind of reminded me of summer camp because it just felt like something I saw put on often in summer camp and uh, while this is I don't think gonna be at the top of my list of the Shrek shorts as I make my way through them um, it was a cute good fun nostalgic watch but there's really not much to this short narratively because it's just literally all the characters singing and then one that I didn't even know was considered to be a short in the Shrek franchise is Shrek the ghost of Lord Farquaad and for anybody who's thinking that sounds rather familiar well, yeah, this is Shrek 4D. It's the exact same video that you would watch if you went to Shrek 4D at Universal Studios in Orlando. I'm not too sure if they had that in other Universal Studios parks, but growing up here in Florida for years throughout the early 2000s and even the 2000, early 2010s, I would go to Universal Studios and they had Shrek 4D there, which was a big auditorium theatrical experience that was only four or five minutes long or maybe a little bit longer. I can't remember right now. And the whole premise was that you have Shrek and Fiona about to go on their honeymoon with Donkey and they end up kind of getting tripped up in this whole experience because Fiona ends up getting kidnapped and we end up learning that it's because the ghost of Lork Farquaad returned. And I remember seeing this the first time back in the day at Universal Studios and thinking that one of the following films or the original Shrek would maybe incorporate the ghost of Lord Farquaad and they never do but this is just for fun for this little short. Lord Farquaad returns and decides to try to wreak havoc, tries to kill Shrek and Donkey and the rest of the gang to try to get Fiona to be his wife still, even though he was repulsed by her at the end of the first film because she is an ogre and he wanted to kill her in that moment. But for some reason in this short, he wants to, you know, get married with her once again. And that's the base premise, as it's just a few minutes of our characters escaping danger throughout the course of this short that was clearly meant to be something that was part of a 4D, 3D experience. For anybody who's not familiar with what 4D is, the base premise is you have the 3D visuals, and whenever something would happen on screen, the seats would move, maybe there'd be some water that spritzes in your face, or some air that blows a smelly smell in your face. And so throughout the course of watching this short, which came on the Blu-ray bundle that I have, you have tons of moments throughout the course of this where it's clearly made for a 3D effect or it's clearly meant to be something that's going to kind of rumble the room or rumble the seats so that the audience had a reaction. And I remember watching this thing and going and doing Shrek 4D over and over and over again when I was a kid. So it was kind of nostalgic to watch this because I felt like I kind of knew this short like a really good song that you haven't heard in a long time. There was an element to it that was nostalgic and it was just a good fun time. It's clearly not made to be just something that you watch normally at home as a regular short because it clearly has those 
those moments that are made to be a theme park extraction but it was fun to go back and revisit i didn't know this was considered one of the shrek shorts uh, but i'm kind of happy it is and that's going to be my thoughts on shrek 2 and the two shorts we talked about today the karaoke dance party swarm thingy as well as the ghost of lord farquaad i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and hearing my thoughts on the shrek franchise so far and i'm looking forward to talking about shrek the third as well as two more shorts that we'll be talking about in that video a big thanks to you beautiful people and i can't wait to hear what you guys have to say are you a fan of shrek 2 or have you seen these two shorts do you enjoy these two shorts did you go to universal studios in orlando as you were growing up to go and check out shrek 4d whatever the case may be leave any and all comments down below and i'll see you beautiful people in the next one Bye bye